the layers are now symbolized and we're ready to perform our suitability analysis. We have the future land use, which is shown as white lines. Uh, we'll be symbolizing that according to actual assigned land uses in the future. But for now, we'll just keep it as outlines. We've got wetlands, purchase of development rights, and agricultural lands. These are all layers that if we have overlap with the parcels, we're going to deem those areas, areas as less de desirable for development. In addition, we have a bird nest location, and in this case, we're going to uh, find out how close the parcels are to that. Uh, obviously, those that are closest to it are going to be less desirable for development, and the ones that are, are uh, uh, further away from it are going to be more desirable. And then I've added one more layer that I didn't do before. This is the project center. So this is located in the center of the parcels. Uh, this is something the developer has chosen to identify. And areas that are located closest to it are going to be desirable for the highest density of development, while those that are further away are going to be a lower density. So we'll turn those off. And next, uh, we're going to show a task which I've already completed. Um, in order to run uh, the suitability analysis, we must make our future land use layer uh, uh, dynamic. And notice that it has an orangey outline around the perimeter of it. That means that it's, it is uh, dynamic. I'm going to go to Scenario 360 uh, at the tab at the bottom, and then the 360 setup, and finally to Data. And here is our future land use. And if I go to the properties for it, I would hit the button that would say make it dynamic, and that would uh, change the status of it and make it so that it could be, have formulas written against it. Uh, we're not going to be uh, doing a lot of that type of analysis of writing formulas ourselves. It's the tools that allow us to write those formulas. In future courses, we may explore a little bit about uh, creating your own custom formulas, but in this case, we want to make it dynamic so the suitability analysis can be run on this parcel layer. Let's go back to uh, 360 analysis and then to the table of contents. And now we're going to open the uh, 360 uh, scenario 360 tools and come down and pick the uh, wizard tool for suitability. So we'll click on that and uh, we're going to create a, a new suitability uh, analysis. The layer that we're going to use is the future land use and notice that's the only one that's available because that's the only one that's dynamic. We're going to leave the name as suitability and we'll go next. And the first layer that we're going to do an analysis on is uh, the uh, project center. So I'm just going to call that center. The layers are now symbolized and we're ready to perform our suitability analysis. We have the future land use which is shown as white lines. Uh, we'll be symbolizing that according to actual assigned land uses in the future, but for now we'll just keep it as outlines. We've got wetlands, purchase of development rights, and agricultural lands. These are all layers that if we have overlap with the parcels, we're going to deem those areas, areas as less de desirable for development. In addition, we have a bird nest location, and in this case, we're going to uh, find out how close the parcels are to that. Uh, Obviously, those that are closest to it are going to be less desirable for development, and the ones that are, are uh, uh, further away from it are going to be more desirable. And then I've added one more layer that I didn't do before. This is the project center. So this is located in the center of the parcels. Uh, this is something the developer has chosen to identify. And areas that are located closest to it are going to be desirable for the highest density of development, while those that are further away are going to be a lower density. So we'll turn those off. And next, um, we're going to show a task which I've already completed. Um, in order to run uh, the suitability analysis, we must make our future land use layer uh, uh, dynamic. And notice that it has an orangey outline around the perimeter of it. That means that it's, it is uh, dynamic. I'm going to go to Scenario 360. Uh, at the tab at the bottom, and then the 360 setup, and finally to data. And here is our future land use. And if I go to the properties for it, I would hit the button that would say make it dynamic. And that would uh, change the status of it and make it so that it could be, have formulas written against it. Uh, we're not going to be uh, 
doing a, a lot of that type of analysis of writing formulas ourselves. It's the tools that allow us to write those formulas. In future courses, we may explore a little bit about uh, creating your own custom formulas, but in this case, we want to make it dynamic so the suitability analysis can be run on this parcel layer. Let's go back to uh, 360 analysis and then to the table of contents. And now we're going to open the uh, 360 uh, scenario 360 tools and come down and pick the uh, wizard tool for suitability. So we'll click on that and uh, we're going to create a, a new suitability uh, analysis. The layer that we're going to use is the future land use and notice that's the only one that's available because that's the only one that's dynamic. We're going to leave the name as suitability and we'll go next and the first layer that we're going to do an analysis on is uh, the uh, project center. So I'm just going to call that center. Uh, I'm going to look at it as being its proximity to other features. In this case it'll be that future land use. I'm going to uh, make sure that I've chosen the project center as the layer, the target layer that I'm doing the analysis on. And I want to get higher scores as I get closer to that project center. So we'll go next and you can read through these but they are done correctly and we'll go next and we've got our first factor that we're working off of. This is the project center. Next let's do another one. So we're going to repeat that. Um, we're going to call this one the bird nest. Uh, and we are going to do it as proximity to other features, but we want to make sure that we pick the bird's nest and we want to get lower scores as we have uh, closer proximity to the bird nest. So this is the opposite of our project center. We'll go next and next, and now we've got both of those factors loaded into there. Now let's go to our next suitability factor, and this one is going to be the agricultural land. We will, in this case, do overlap for it. We'll hit a drop down and notice that it is picked correctly this time with agricultural land. We'll hit next and next. And uh, let's, uh, you can see that it's set up correctly. Let's add a couple more. Uh, let's do the PDR. And we're going to pick PDR here. Our next factor is agricultural lands. So we'll type in ag land. We want to do the amount of overlap with this layer. The target layer is correct, but we want to provide lower scores based upon the amount of overlap. So we'll go next and next, and you can see that that's now set up correctly. Uh, we can do wetlands. and overlap. You can see how quickly these come together. Lower scores, next, next. Purchase of development rights, overlap. Now we're going to do one slightly different one. We're going to look at uh, value, land value, uh, suitability. And uh, in this case, instead of doing another layer, we're going to go from an attribute. And the attribute is called land value. I created that based upon proximity to uh, major streets with uh, uh, the highest values being in the $12,000 per acre and the lower values being 8000 we can look at those numbers here in the future, but recognize that it's this is an attribute that's part of the uh, future land use attribute table, uh, and and we're simply referencing that and giving it a higher score based upon those values. Probably worth noting at this point as well that there's the ability to use an underlying grid, raster information, that kind of thing, uh, as a, as a source of calculation. You'd have to have spatial analysts in order to do that. There's also the ability to write a condition. Let's say that for the agricultural land, we only wanted to do cropland and not pasture. So this would help us write a condition that would say something about uh, uh, use the agricultural land where the type is uh, cropland. We're going to leave those aside. That's something that's out there. 
uh, you can experiment with. Let's go next and next. And now we have our list of all the different items that are there. You can see that <clears throat> two of them are based upon proximity. There's four that are overlap and one that's based on an attribute. And it references the target layer, shows that it's weighted, uh, and we'll hit finish.